After more than 18 months of pandemic delays, No Time to Die opened on Target. The final James Bond film of the Daniel Craig era grossed $56 million from 4,407 North American theaters, according to studio estimates on Sunday, to easily take the first placed spot. It didn't break any pandemic or 007 records, but it didn't fall significantly short, either, and is in fact the fourth best opening in the 25 film series. James Bond isn't Marvel when it comes to opening weekends. Bond has always had an older audience, which is typically less inclined to rush out for the first weekend. In fact, the best Bond opening ever didn't even crack $100 million. It was $88.4 million for Skyfall, which debuted in 2012. It's been a long time coming to get this movie on the big screen, says Eric Lomas, head of distribution for United Artists releasing. It's right where we thought it would be and right where tracking predicted it would be. Daniel Craig on why he almost quit Bond before No Time to Die. How Sean Connery, Roger Moore said goodbye to Bond. Carrie Joji Fukunaga directed this installment, which co stars Lee Sadu. Ben Wisha, Naomi Harris, Anada Armas, Lashana Lynch, and Rami Malek, as the antagonist. Both critics and audiences have responded positively, 84% positive reviews on Rotten Tomatoes and an A- from crowds on CinemaScore. According to Exit Data, audiences were heavily male, 64%, and over 35, 57%. Unlike many films released during the pandemic, a streaming or hybrid release was never even a consideration for No Time to Die. In addition to being the longest Bond film ever at 2 hours and 43 minutes, it was also an expensive one, with a reported production budget of around $250 million. And that doesn't include marketing costs, which reportedly exceeded $100 million. Michael Wilson and Barbara Broccoli are huge believers in the theatrical experience, Lomas says of the film's producers. They delivered us a terrific movie and together we held it for theatrical. That was hugely important to us, to them and to the theater owners. And when you see this kind of result, it's very gratifying. According to the film's distributor, 25% of moviegoers returned to theaters for the first time in 18 months this weekend, suggesting that the film will have legs. That, I thought, was a pretty significant statistic, low miss ads. He says has been getting calls from theater owners around the country saying that audiences have been regularly applauding at the end of the movie. But the profitability of Bond movies ultimately comes down to international, which in the Craig era has regularly accounted for more than 70% of the global total. No Time to Die launched abroad last weekend with Universal handling some territories and MGM others, and as of Sunday, global grosses were estimated to be $313.3 million. Rounding out the rest of the top five, Tom Hardy's Venom sequel, Let There Be Carnage, slid to number two with $32 million, and The Addams Family 2. 
The second animated movie starring Charlize Theron and Oscar Isaac, was third with $10.1 million. Marvel Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings fell to fourth and $4.2 million, while Sopranos prequel The Many Saints of Newark finished fifth with $1.45 million. Final numbers are expected Tuesday. Contributing, Kim Willis, USA Today. James Bond run with a stirring if flawed effort.